Even all remarks here, back again with another video, back again with another Oculus in general video. So today, 26th of September, we had the Oculus Connect 5 event. So this is Oculus's fifth event where they go through all the kind of new stuff they're kind of pushing and intend to bring out and give us updates on stuff that's already out. And in this video, I'm going to cover the two things which I think you guys are probably most interested in. Any updates to the Oculus Go and what is the Santa Cruz? Well, it's now called the Oculus Quest. So Oculus Go, first thing, they're going to bring streaming, so it's been confirmed that streaming to a mobile device has been confirmed. It's on its way and should hopefully be with us sometime next month. So next month isn't too far away, that's October, it's September, so good one with that one. It's going to be to mobile devices to start with, so Android and iOS, but they're going to bring it over to sort of TVs and other things anyway. But to be fair, if you can stream it to your phone, you probably can replicate your phone screen to something else anyway, so there's probably going to be a way around that. So win-win with that one, I like that. That'll also make it easier to record stuff as well, so for videos and sort of let's plays and stuff for this channel and whatever. Brilliant. The YouTube VR app is coming as well. That's confirmed. It's been on the Gear VR for a while, so they're finally going to port it over. That'll save us going through to the uh, browser and going through to YouTube. We'll get a nice streamlined app so we can get into YouTube nice and easy, and you can watch my videos as much as you like on YouTube. There's no news on the expandable storage and sort of when that's coming. So obviously we were thinking about the Oculus Go. We wanted to be able to plug things into the USB port and add expandable storage, but there's no word on when that's coming. Hopefully it'll just be one of the updates coming sort of thing, and they just didn't feel it was important enough to add but if that comes that'd be brilliant increase the storage of your 32 gigs and that sort of thing put media on and videos and that sort of stuff and expand it but no confirmation on when that's coming and it, or if it's coming so no news on that one they're also going to bring out some various improvements to kind of the system which will include things like improving the chromatic aberration so for example when you kind of look at stuff and stuff is in kind of the corner of your eye sort of thing a lot of times you kind of get this little sort of color fringe it's usually kind of purple so there would be sort of fixes coming in for that sort of stuff and the changes are meant to kind of make the overall sort of picture and sort of clarity of all the stuff that's going on even better. So they pretty much confirmed there's going to be no price change, so still 200 or 250 for the two different versions, which is fine because when you kind of compare it to the new headset that's coming out, it makes kind of sense what they're trying to do. And finally, Oculus Venues. They're going to add loads more content to that. I did the live stream for the Oculus Connect event, so if you're watching this, you can go watch the live stream for that as well. It's you know pretty much three hours long by the time I finish chatting. And that was done in Oculus Venues, so you can kind of see how it works. And it's great. So you can watch more films, they can bring in some NBA games as well. So you can be able to download and wear your on your avatar the jerseys of the teams that you support. And do you want to know the best thing about the Oculus Go section? I was in it! I was in their Oculus Go trailer. So if you check it out, about 53 seconds in, and don't blink, don't blink, you will miss it. They use a clip from my Oculus Go video where I took it on a plane, and it's literally just me with a headset on. I guess it's meant to kind of show sort of you know, where you can use the headset and different experiences people have been having and how they've been using the headset. So, you know, I think I need to get myself an agent. And now onto the Santa Cruz, or as it's now known, the Oculus Quest. So that's an interesting name. It's been confirmed it's coming spring 2019. It's a completely standalone headset. You don't need to plug it in. It's completely wires free. It's just like the Oculus Go, but with kind of better specs. So it's going to come out early part of next year, quarter one, exact date TBC, but we'll see. It's going to be $399, I assume £399, for a 64 gigabyte model. It does say from that price, so I wonder if they're going to bring out sort of two versions or three versions, a bit like the Oculus Go, maybe, because they haven't confirmed any expandable storage. And I've seen someone sort of look around the headset and there didn't seem to be any slots for sort of memory cards or anything like that. So we're going to assume that it's going to be like the Oculus Go, built-in storage, and maybe they'll sort of be expandable just with USB. And talking of USB, it's going to be USB-C. So hopefully that means if you do want to plug it in, it'll draw enough power to kind of keep it going sort of thing. Because I know with the Oculus Go sometimes, if I have it plugged in, it'll still drain down battery. It does go down slower, but it still drains down. So hopefully with the increased sort of power that USB-C gives you, it'll sort of make the headset last a lot longer. Obviously it's going to run on a higher processor and a higher set of kit, so it'll probably kind of level out a bit, but we'll see. And talk about processors, they didn't confirm which processor it's going to work on. So whether it's the Qualcomm 835 or the 845. We're hoping the 845, but we'll hopefully find out soon while people are testing it and that sort of thing today. So we may know by the time this video goes out. It's going to have full six degrees of freedom. So it's got four sensors on it, sort of two either side, wide view. And they're going to kind of check the surrounding, do room scale tracking. So literally it's going to sort of map a room, knows where you're going, give you the kind of 
guardian system that you get on the rift as well so it knows where kind of like walls are and it'll kind of warn you before you hit them and it'll sort of lay it all out for you sort of thing and it's supposed to work from anything from a small room to 4,000 feet sort of thing so it can map rooms and it's even meant to be able to sort of remember different rooms so if you take your headset to your friend's house it maps that room it then remembers it you bring it back to yours you bring it to your bedroom you do whatever it remembers the different rooms you use it in so that's brilliant that saves a lot of setup another rift if you like me you have to put out sensors you have to kind of set them all up run through the kind of all the setting up process and that sort of thing calibrate them there's none of that you just let the oculus quest do its job it senses everything perfect and one thing it also senses as well is it's two controllers so it has two controllers that are set out exactly like the oculus rift controllers so any games that get converted from the oculus rift to the oculus quest will be perfectly mapped to the controllers so you get the full touch controllers little joy pads the only difference than controllers is kind of the ring rather than being round your hand with an oculus rift it's actually facing up which i imagine is just so kind of given the sensors are on your head rather than kind of out there it just helps with the tracking so the sense it's a little bit closer to the sensors so they can kind of keep an eye on them and that brings us on to games they say at release there'll be 50 plus experiences for you to be able to download and use on your new oculus quest there's a few games that have been confirmed robo recall the climb and moss have been confirmed and also a game from industrial light and magic which is obviously Star Wars, so it's gonna be Immortal Vader game. So you'll be able to relive all your fancy of playing as Darth Vader and slicing people up. And it's the first episode in a series from the sounds of it, so hopefully we should see more on that. There was a little trailer, but it didn't really show kind of much. It was a little bit of kind of CGI stuff, no kind of gameplay. The guy who introduced it seemed to get very excited that he'd watched it 25 times and it gave him goosebumps. I'm not sure many people would say that, but you know, whatever floats your boat, mate. And when thinking about games, I think it's interesting as well that because it's got the two controllers and obviously it's wireless, at the moment with the Oculus Go, you can connect that to a PC and play Steam VR games. Now you've only got one controller, it's not perfect, but it does play quite well. I've played sort of Beat Saber, one-handed controller and you do play it perfectly fine so now with two controllers i imagine the people who kind of do those sort of things so alvr and vridge will be able to port that sort of program over to the oculus quest and we'll be able to play full riff games anyway so that's going to be amazing i mean obviously i don't know whether that's actually going to come true but i do hope people do and sort of wireless rift headset technically unofficially more <laughs> Brilliant. The Oculus Quest uses the exact same Fresnel lenses as the Oculus Go at the same resolution screen as well. So 1600 by 1440 per eye. It also comes with an IPD slider. So on the bottom of the headset, you can kind of separate sort of how far apart the lenses are. So you kind of get that perfect vision. I've never had any issues or heard much issues with the Oculus Go headset, but it's nice to have the option in there anyway, because some people have big heads, sometimes people have small heads, why not? It also has a similar audio setup to the Oculus Go. So where the Oculus Go has these kind of plastic bars on the headband there, the sound kind of comes down and then kind of comes out of a little slot there. There you go, you can see it. It's gonna be the same method of doing sound on the Oculus Quest, but they say it's gonna have even better bass. So that's a win because it works really well on the Oculus Go. So if it's the same, and but works better, perfect. It also comes with a headphone jack as well. So if you wanna use your headphones, you can do that as well. Your head strap on the Oculus Quest is very similar to the one on the Oculus Rift. So rather than being sort of the fabric -y one that you get on the Oculus Go, it's gonna be a much stiffer sort of form-fitting headset. So it looks quite comfortable and I think it will be kind of quite good. The only kind of downside to that is it makes it less portable, given the kind of the standalone nature of it and then you can wander around with it. Obviously it's gonna be a bit bigger to stick in your bag to take it away. For a higher end headset with six degrees of freedom, I think you kind of need that sort of strap to your head sort of feel that you can kind of move around and it won't go flying off. So I think I can live with that. We haven't heard anything about the battery life in the Oculus Quest yet. We don't know how long it's gonna last compared to the Oculus Go. Does it need charging? Can you use it while charging? Because they don't recommend you do that with the Oculus Go. I think that's more a safety thing rather than kind of a damage in the headset type thing. Hopefully it's got a nice large battery in it, but obviously what comes with a large battery, it makes the headset heavier. And considering it's on your head and considering it's free and considering you'll be moving around and swinging your head everywhere, you kind of don't want a heavy headset. So there might be common compromise there. I think if it can hit sort of two hours again, like the Oculus Go, that's reasonable. Anything less than that, I think we'll probably have some questions to ask. But given that it's got USB-C, hopefully that will mean sort of, you know, it'll charge faster. So you can stick it on, maybe it's got fast charging, that'd be brilliant, so you know, you charge it for half an hour, it gives you two hours. So if it's got that sort of thing built in, you know, that might be a good compromise. 
So that's pretty much all we've got at the moment from the Oculus Go and the Oculus Quest. There's some good juicy bits in there. I think for $400 or 400 pounds, that's gonna be an amazing offer. It sits it perfectly between the Oculus Go, which is 200 pound, then you've got the Oculus Quest, which is £400 or $400, which is a bargain in itself, considering it's going to be the Rift-like experiences. And then you've got full-on VR, PC VR, that the kind of Oculus have kind of stressed this is their kind of model. They are sticking to these three, and they're their first generation, their first generation of headsets that they're going to push on with. And they're each going to have their own sort of marketplace of apps. So they all kind of stay kind of self-contained. So the developers will hopefully have tools that allow them to kind of port them between the different systems, particularly between the the Rift and the Quest and the Rift obviously is going to be in a full-on headset it's 400 quid or 400 dollars as well the same as the Quest but obviously you need a PC to go with it but at the same time it offers so much more as a headset they're developing richer bigger more graphically intensive sort of experiences and I don't think we can realistically expect everything from the Rift to be ported over but there definitely are things that will but at 400 pound or 400 dollars that's going to be an amazing price point you're really going to be able to sell that this is a worthwhile investment for people so I can guarantee when you put the Oculus Go on someone head they're amazed they think it's brilliant and then when they find out it's only 200 quid most people think that is brilliant so for 400 pound and you get that six degrees of freedom the controllers all the games you know kind of that kind of whole sort of vr experience which we're getting very close to kind of rift level experience mobile amazing i mean i'm excited about it i don't think it replaces the oculus go i definitely don't think it replaces the rift they're three very different products for very different people they stress that the oculus go is for media and social interaction sort of kind of introduction to vr perfect 200 pound 200 dollars brilliant and then in the middle you've got the oculus quest which adds a much richer sort of more interactive more sort of vr driven sort of experiences that's six degrees of freedom those dual controllers those sensors everything else that's near rift like experiences it's gonna be a real easy sound and i can't wait to get my hands on one it looks brilliant i can't wait it's everything i thought it would be and at that price i think people thought it was gonna be 200 pound 200 dollars more than that easy so it's a nice surprise and then the rift obviously is just that high-end premium pc stuff it's where the big money is you know the where that's where sort of the future will be pushed and you can't do that when you're mobile you need to be plugged in but they're obviously bringing out new graphics cards that are going to make better use of vr and you know the future couldn't look better for vr i'm excited and i hope you are too let me know in the comments down below what you think about the updates to the oculus go and the oculus quest is it all you expected is there anything missing do you want to see something do you want me to kind of look into something and get more information let me know in the comments down below and i'll see what i can do obviously i'm not at oculus connect so i'm not gonna be able to get my hands on the headset but there are a bunch of vr guys out there that i'll leave some links to and stuff down below where you can check out their content so they're gonna get their hands on it and do some sort of deep dives on it stuff that i'm not gonna be able to do which is a shame but hopefully next year when they do Oculus Connect 6 and I'll be getting hands on with it and you can kind of come along with me for that. But give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't, that's fine. I'm big enough and ugly if it's take if you didn't like it, but do let me know in the comments down below why you didn't like it and I'll try and do better for next time. Become one of the remarkables and hit that subscribe button and also that notification bell so you know when I next upload a video. And that's me done, I'm out, have a virtual high five. <laughs>